Charlie Barnes of CFX Works. Welcome to Shop Talk. We are gonna start our paint job now. Uh, these are the cars I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start with the charcoal. This is a char metallic charcoal, which is kind of a gunmetal grayish looking color. Um, it is metallic, so you can see the sparkles on there. I'm gonna do that as the base coat. Uh, once I do that and I'm happy with the amount of coats I'm doing, I'm gonna back it with black just to seal that off. That way there won't be any bleeds from any other colors. So this is the two colors I'm gonna use first, the metallic charcoal and the base coat black. After that, I'm gonna peel my masking off. And as you can see, the masking is on here. I'm gonna peel the masking off and I'm gonna do a few shots of this candy. This is a candy yellow sun, okay? Um, since it's a candy, it's a transparent paint. So what that means is that the more uh, coats you do, the deeper the color is gonna get. I'm not gonna go that deep on it because I'm gonna back it with this, this uh, metallic copper to make it more vibrant and with the metallic in it, it's gonna make that color stand out a lot more. So that's, those are the main colors I'm gonna use. Um, I'm gonna thin the paints a little bit with the reducer. So that's my plans for today. Let's go to get to painting. So before we start painting, I kinda wanna show you our setup over here. Let's come down and show you compressors. So there's two kinds of compressors they actually use here. Um, this one is a diaphragm compressor. This is made by a water called the Smart Jet. The reason why it's called diaphragm because there's no tank to hold the air. So the motor keeps on going as you paint. The only di downside to a small diaphragm compressor is that they do heat up because they don't stop working. They keep on going continuously until you stop. So for mass production type bodies, are uh, like five to 10 bodies, probably not a good idea. One or two, no problem. What I am using though is my Silent Air 50, which is this right here. Yes, it's very dirty, it's very old. It's also about 20 years old, but it works like a champ. It's actually on right now and you can't hear it because the motor comes from a refrigerator compressor and it's super quiet. And I have it plugged into my manifold over here, which I'm only using two of my Iwata airbrushes. One of them is the HPC with the stock tip, which is a 0.35 tip. And this is the HPC, also a gravity fed brush, but has a 0.5 millimeter tip. So these are the ones I'm gonna be using today. More than likely the uh, 0.5 millimeter one because I'm not doing any fine detail, just broad strokes, especially with metallics and candies, they're thicker paints. So you want a bigger tip uh, for it to spray the paint better. I'm gonna go with about 40 PSI and go from there. And if 40 PSI isn't strong enough, I can always raise PSI or I can thin the paints to my liking. I like a consistency of milk or maybe even skim milk sometimes so it sprays better through your brush. So let me get the paint started. I'm gonna start with a metallic uh, metallic charcoal and we'll do the base coat on that paint job. All right, I'm starting with the metallic charcoal here. I'm gonna pour it in my paint cup. This is my Iwata HPCS with a 0.5 millimeter tip. Because it's metallic, I'm gonna go with a bigger tip so to make the paint flow a lot better, okay? So, Proline paints are designed to be sprayed directly from the bottle. So, but I know through experience, metallic paints are a little bit thicker than normal. So I'm gonna thin it down a little bit. We have the Proline thinner here, or the reducer, I should say. Always remember too, to shake your paint. I shook the paint pretty profusely earlier but there's a little marble in there or ball bearing to help uh, you know, loosen the paint up so it mixes together. So I'm only gonna add a couple drops from now and see how the paint is. Probably about like maybe 10% on the cup. I'm also gonna get me a propstick stick to mix it, so give me a sec. A few moments later. So here's a secret I always use I use a popsicle stick to mix the paint, but I also sharpen one side. Why, you ask? A lot of times when you paint, you're gonna get paint bleeds. Um, and the best way to get rid of paint bleeds is not using your X-Acto knife, because you're gonna scratch the body. But when you have a sharp point on wood, like this popsicle stick, it doesn't scratch the body, but it does remove the paint. You'll see how convenient this is later on if I do have a bleed. So for now, I'm gonna mix the paint with the reducer. There you go. 
Okay, it's not as thick anymore. And when I lift up this, this uh, popsicle stick, you're gonna see a drip. You'll see the consistency. Yep, looks about right to me. Again, if you can slow mo this, you'll see the consistency of the paint. That's kind of where you want to be at for metallics. Now that I'm ready to paint, um, because I'm gonna go for maximum coverage, I'm gonna step my airbrush back a little bit more than normal. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick tack coat. What a tack coat is, is a light coat that you're gonna put on the body so paint can cling onto it once you start putting more layers on. So this is the tack coat. It's somewhat wet. I want to say it's a, a damp coat. It is very light, as you can see. And I'm just having it, I'm just having it on there so my next coat of paint, it's going to actually cling on to the paint so you can get better coverage on your body. Uh, to assist in the drying, although it doesn't really need assistance, I'm going to use a little heat gun here to dry it off a little bit faster. With a heat gun, you don't need that much time. I actually prefer um, um, uh, stronger air pressure than I do uh, the heat, but the heat's going to have to do. So some people ask about um, if there's anything to set in the airbrush up. Um, with my eyewaters, there's nothing to set up. Um, I know some of the, was it the Badger? The, like the Badger Crescendo has three different tips you can change. Um, this one, it's just the way it is. So there's nothing to set up. It's, it's already put together and it's ready to spray. So with that being said, it's a very simple to use airbrush. Um, once in a while you do have to wipe the tip up, but other than that, it'll keep on spraying if you keep on keeping it clean in the inside. So yeah, that's a quick tip for you. So looks like uh, the paint's already dry. That wasn't too, <laughs> that wasn't too long, probably uh, not even two minutes. I'm ready to do my first coat. I'm gonna go a little bit heavy, uh, a little bit heavy of a wet coat, but not a dripping wet coat, just enough to see some, some, somewhat of a reflection so I know the paint is clinging on. So you definitely don't want the paint to dry in the air once it hits a body or else it won't adhere. So you want it to be wet first when it's on the surface. That way everything dries up on the surface. Full power, remember full air, and you pull back for the ink or the paint. So I already ran out. Remember, shake it up. Pour it in. Just a couple drops of reducer. Looks like it was a little too thin for me, so I'm only gonna do a couple drops. One, two, that's plenty. The Proline paints are so good out of the bottle, I probably don't even need reducer, but because of habit, I just added reducer anyway. But look at that. It's a little bit thicker, but I think it should be fine. Let's try that. Plus, the thicker the paint, the more glue of the paint is going to be, so it'll stick to the body better. Proline paint spray is amazing. I'm still blown away by how good it is. As you notice when I paint, I'm always going back and forth with my trigger. And the reason for that is you never want to release your paint when your trigger is all the way back. Because what that, what that means is that you're leaving ink on your tip to dry up. You don't want ink to, or paint to dry on your tip. So always push the trigger back forward so it's air and then release. That way it blows off all excess paint from your needle tip, which is this right here. I can open it. 
that little tip right there, the paint doesn't dry on there, and you won't have paint tip. So you won't have any problems with clogging. Coverage is actually pretty good. I'm gonna keep on going for a little bit more and then let it dry. And I'm out of paint. <laughs> I'm going through some paint. Probably gonna be my final coat for the metallic because um, it's actually covering really, really well. So it's probably going to be my last coat and I'm going to back it with regular black. And the coverage looks pretty good to me. Since it's still a little bit translucent, I'm going to do one coat of the base coat black to seal it off for one thing. Uh, make the metallic look a little bit deeper and that way it protects it from the candy that we're going to spray over it. So I'm going to clean my airbrush right now. See there's paint in there. I have reducer in here. This is the Proline reducer. I probably have about 30 bottles of reducer in here. So I'm just going to spray it to clean it, to wash it out. And release. And the way you know your airbrush is clean, because you're using the reducer to clean it, it already thins the paint down. So what better way to use to clean the paint other than to use a reducer that it, that it comes with? So, and once it starts spraying clear, your paint job, your, your airbrush is clear and clean. Also make sure when you do this, you're in a well ventilated area. And I want to stress that because I didn't mention it because I just assume and you should never assume. Um, if you can hear that noise, that's the actual ventilation system we're using. And we have filters here to actually filter out all the particles that you know that gets that gets thrown into the atmosphere but for sure make sure when you paint try to paint outdoors if you can't paint outdoors make sure you have a window open or a fan to to ventilate all the all the fumes because it does it does fill up the room and like i said it does get into your lungs so make sure uh, your area is well ventilated and yes i am not wearing a mask because i got this right here to help me out um would it be better protection with a mask absolutely but for this video and for video purposes, you guys can understand me better. But I do have a very strong vent here and it is, uh, it is filtering off all, all the paint. So I think I'm in good hands. So I'm gonna shake the black now. This is the regular base coat black. I'm gonna do one, one light coat of that in the back just to seal everything off. Using the base coat black, it isn't necessary to thin it down, but I'm just a creature of habit. So I thin it down about three drops of reducer. You don't need it because it's super thin now. So they'll probably go by pretty quick. So I'll try to make the maximum coverage with just one color cup. So let's start sealing it up with black. <laughs> that was faster than I thought. I'm going straight from the bottle. I'm not going to thin this time. It's way too thin. And we'll finish the rest of the body. All right, looks like coverage is pretty good. I'm happy with the tint on it. The black, not tint, but the black uh, black base coat. I'm gonna heat dry for a little bit. Make sure it's nice and sealed in there. And I'm ready to peel off the masks after this. Once I peel off the mask, I'm gonna spray the candy and I'm gonna back it up with the, cop with the uh, metallic copper. All right, now that I'm happy with the coat for the metallic charcoal, 
to see everything's very even. I even seal it with a black to make sure that it's nice and deep and the metallics stand out. I'm gonna peel the, my masking. I'll peel out the hood, I'll peel out the sides, and I'll be ready to paint the next color. With my pick, I'm just gonna try to carefully peel off the pit tape. With my tweezers here, my strong tweezers, and just pull it off. So you can see we didn't go very heavy on the paint, so it should be a pretty clean uh, paint peel. So you see there's no bleach or nothing. Using the really thin tape helps. I'm gonna take the rest out now. So you kind of see the pattern that's coming off now. So once I clean that up, you'll you'll uh, not be distracted by the lines, but it'll be cleaner on this side. And there you go, nice and clean. That's uh, using a vinyl mask and some tape. Uh, the, tra the transparent 3M tape, you can come in green or blue. As long as they're the smooth type, the rice paper type, they work awesome. So now that I have all the masking off, I'm gonna start with a candy color. I'm gonna start with Candy Yellow Sun, which is this right here. Um, remember, um, it's crucial to spray the candies the right way. Because if you don't do even coats and overlapping coats, and I'm gonna show you how to do that now, um, you're gonna see streaks on there and they'll be uneven. Um, not so much on RCs, but on, uh, when you paint the exterior for like say, helmets or cars or motorcycles, you can see it a lot more. Because RC, since we're painting backwards, um, it's a little bit less obvious, but it's still obvious. So I'm gonna spray direct from the bottle and see how this goes. I'm probably gonna do about two, two coats tops on this. I'm not gonna go too heavy because if you go too heavy on the candies, um, adhesion becomes an issue sometimes. So you wanna spray it right with the right coverage, but not too heavy or too light. So also, if, you, if your paint is too thick and you reduce it, just know that the candy paints are the least amount of, uh, of, uh, ad of adhesive than the other paints. So by adding more reducer, you could be very well taking out all the adhesion of the paint. So just be careful and uh, you'll use your better judgment and do test panels. I always recommend test panels because you don't want to start an experiment on your paint job and ruin it because you didn't test it out. So I'm going to do the layers right now and do even layer, layers back and forth. And I'll be overlapping them using broad strokes so there's no streaking or dark spots or heavy spots. Starting with the side. And what I mean by overlapping, when you're going over a line, say you're going with line this thick, move it down and then so you're overlapping the one on top. So you're always keeping a layer wet. That way your strokes are even. Paint dries pretty fast, so I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna go another, I'm probably gonna do two more layers actually till, uh, till I'm happy with the, with the coats. And the big secret from painting candies, you wanna go even light wet coats. Um, when I say wet, you don't want the paint to be dry when it's sprayed. You want it moist or tacky. Uh, but you don't want it dripping, that's too much. So you want to do light wet coats or medium wet coats uh, to do the paint job. All right, this is my last coat of candy and then we'll do the metallics. So I'm gonna make sure the coverage is perfect. And I run out of paint. Getting straight out of the bottle. These Proline paints are amazing because I've been doing this for way too long and there's always something you gotta mix in the paints, but these Proline paints, right out of the bottle, works 
Awesome. So I'm gonna dry the candy now with my heat gun and I'll be start, and I'll start prepping for the metallic paint. Okay, I'm down to my final color, which is a metallic copper. And this is what I'll be back in the candy yellow sun, okay? And again, the metallic colors are a little bit thick, so I'm shaking it a lot. I may or may not have to reduce it, but let's see how it feels on my airbrush. The 0.5 millimeter tip on this HPCS is working excellent right now. So I don't think I need to, but we'll see. No problem out of the bottle. So I laid a wet coat right now, so you can see it's kind of wet. I'm gonna use my, my heat gun to dry it up and do a couple more coats. So it almost appears to me that the metallic copper may be a little too translucent for me. So I think after the copper, I'm gonna back it with metallic silver uh, or the aluminum, I should say, just to finish it off. So for now, I'll do a few more coats. All right, so for my final coat, and I added this last minute, um, the metallic copper and the candy looks a little bit too translucent for me. Um, just doing the finger test, seeing through my fingers to the other side. You can't see that with the body's band on the car, but for me, for extra insurance, I want to back it with aluminum. Uh, that way it backs everything up and I'll have a little bit more metallic look to it. So um, also spraying on distances, when I'm doing wide patterns or wide strokes, I want to bring my airbrush a lot further back. If I'm doing closer for detail, I go closer for it because I want the finer line. So that's the difference. So I mean, I'm doing um, broad strokes now, so I'm further back than normal and because I want maximum coverage. Just doing one coat on that, just a protective coat. And I'm pretty much done with the inside part of the body. And it looks like you guys get a treat. I'm gonna paint the outside trims of the body so you can have a little bit more out of the paint job than just a simple paint job. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mask out, I'm gonna take the protective film off of the fenders and the side skirt and mask out some of the areas that I tore already. And I'm gonna paint this black with a base coat black. So. Give me a second while I clean this airbrush up and prep this for painting black and we'll have some trim paint on here. So this car is gonna look awesome. So like I said, I'm giving you a little bit of extra now. I'm actually gonna paint the fenders and the side skirts black, a little flat black. So I've outlined it with my X-Acto knife. Remember, brand new blade, cause it's super sharp and you don't have to go too heavy because the um, protective film is so thin, it'll peel right off. So right now I'm taking the front fender off because I am going to paint this black. All I'm doing now is cutting out the parts I'm going to paint black, which is the fenders and the side skirts. So now the fenders and the side skirts are exposed. I'm gonna cover this part up because it did get ripped when I was playing with it with just some masking tape. So I know I don't want this area to be painted black. Okay, it looks like it's ready to paint. 
All right, so to do the fenders and the side skirts, I'm gonna use base coat black or just regular black. And I'm gonna paint on the outside of it so it has a more matte looking finish um, to pretty much uh, replicate rubber. So make, it looks more realistic that way. So I'm painting it outside. I'm gonna go light first, a light tack coat, and then I'm gonna go just cover it up. Remember, since the protective film's still on the body and I only cut out the finish with the side skirts, it's not gonna affect the outside or overall paint scheme. It looks like overspray right now because it is overspray, but the rest of the paint job is fine. So I'm gonna dry this up and then go a heavier coat and we'll be doing our paint job. So we actually use a lot of products today here from ProLine. And I must say they work pretty darn awesome. So today we did the candies, we did the metallics, we did the base coats. So I think overall we've covered a lot today in this paint job. Now if you have any questions, like, go to ProLineRacing.com. Also, if you want to catch my work, I'm Charlie Barnes from CFX Paintworks. Find me on Facebook or the RC Paint Chat on Facebook. A lot of paint questions there, a lot of paint questions answered, a lot of excellent painters there to help out as well. All pros from all around the world. So again, my name is Charlie Barnes, CFX Paintworks. This is Shop Talk. Thanks for joining us. Give us a like and subscribe. Talk to you guys soon.